we've reached the uh the period of time in the off season where we're in prediction mode how many touchdowns is this quarterback gonna throw for how many interceptions how many rush yards is this back gonna get how many receiving yards uh is this wide receiver or tight end gonna catch what's gonna happen how many games is your team gonna win and so on and so forth the predictions as y'all know they go super super crazy and it's fun because it's always nice to look back and be like oh yeah i was right about that or in my case oh man i was wrong about that um and bleach report uh br gridiron they are no different uh because i was scrolling on instagram this morning um and this was a uh, a post that they did about 2022 breakout candidates uh and of course the headline uh was trevor lawrence number one overall pick uh from a year ago from the jacksonville jaguars uh and they of course they got him a couple of receivers they spent some crazy money on them and they really reset that receiver market but hey <laughs> jacksonville with their team with the, the the situation that they're in and the lack of success that they've had um, if you want people to come, you're going to have to pay extra money. You're going to have to pay more than the average. You're going to have to pay more than what the market is saying. So with them giving out the crazy contracts, initially it was a surprise, but then when you think about it, it's like, oh, okay, I get why. Now, um, another person that they had uh, as a breakout candidate will be 49ers quarterback Trey Lance. And with Trey Lance, he's expected... Uh, to be the starting quarterback we of course keep hearing all these rumors about jimmy garoppolo garoppolo um and where he could possibly be traded to uh but it's been dry it's been real dry it's been real dry on jimmy garoppolo it's been real dry on baker mayfield uh it's like and these dudes just sitting there like man nobody wants me and and i think with the situation that both of those quarterbacks are in, i think is a, a lot of has to do with that salary uh, Jimmy Garofalo, uh, I'm Garofalo, why do I keep calling him Garofalo? Whose name is Garofalo? Oh, Mike Garofalo, the, the, the reporter. But Jimmy Garofalo, um, he, I think he would get paid like 22 mil, something like that. But if 49ers cut him, I believe there is either no or a very, very, very minimal amount of dead money. So they can cut him, get out of the deal, and they would gain like 20-something mil in cap space. So we feel like it's just a matter of time, but they seem to be waiting this out till somebody uh, takes the bait on a trade or whatnot. And I'm sure, like, I, I think they would take something really low for Jimmy Garoppolo uh, just to get him off the team so they can move forward with Trey Lance, and that'll be that. I don't see him being on the team just sitting there being a $20 million backup, uh, but hey, we'll see. Um, another candidate, Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddle. Oh, yeah, Ravens fans, they know about him. We remember him from last year and that, that Ravens Dolphins game. He showed himself. But now uh, I can see why they have him listed as a uh, breakout candidate because of his one of his newest teammates, that being Tyreek Hill. And you got two receivers with crazy speed on the field at the same time. You know Tyreek Hill is going to be getting a lot of attention. Um, and with him getting all that attention, uh, Jalen Waddle, it should put him in more favorable situations and more favorable matchups. Um, so I can definitely see why he would be a candidate for breaking out. Another one. It's a good one. It's an interesting one right here. Uh, Broncos wide receiver, Jerry Judy. South Florida zone, by the way. Um, and with him, I, I think the reason why they have him as a breakout candidate uh, is not because uh, the situation changed. They added uh, another receiver. They added another weapon. No, it's because they added a quarterback. And they added a legitimate quarterback with Russell Wilson, uh, who's going to get Jerry Judy that ball. They made a serious upgrade uh, at the QB position. And when you make a serious upgrade at the QB position, it affects everybody uh, on that offense. And then, of course, it affects the, the defense, too. Because if your quarterback and your offense are moving the ball, they're scoring points, then that makes it easier for the defense. And Broncos, they already had a good defense. But now if you could have a good offense too, they could be one of those sleeper teams uh, in the AFC. So we'll see what happens with that. Another one, Cowboys running back Tony Pollard. Now this is an interesting one because, you know, with Ezekiel Elliott, um, they paid him a lot of money. A lot of people feel like uh, they shouldn't have paid him all that money. A lot of people feel like they definitely regret paying him all that money. But, hey, it happened. And you, he was one of the better backs in the league, and he was doing his thing. Ezekiel Elliott was. 
You know, injuries kind of slowed him down. And then Tony Pollard, he's been speeding up. Um, so a lot of people feel like he could break out. And he's been looking good uh, for the Cowboys last couple of years. There's some people say, hey, he's better than Zeke. I've heard that a lot from people. Um, so I can see why they would have him listed uh, as a breakout candidate. Um, another guy, Chargers cornerback Asante Samuel Jr. And I think the biggest reason that they may have him as a breakout candidate, obviously you got Derwin James behind you. Um, but And they just signed uh, the cornerback from the Patriots, uh, who I, I wish we could have signed, but I understand. It, it Big money right there. Um, oh, who always, J.C. Jackson. There we go. J.C. Jackson, who catch like a million picks a season. So with him, uh, quarterbacks, they're like, man, if we throw to his side, he's going to end up picking us off. So let's throw to the other side. So this will give Asante Samuel Jr. a chance to really evolve and emerge. And another thing that goes in his favor, Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, same field, same time, same team. Yeah, that's trouble. Even though Khalil Mack over the past couple years, he has been a little down. He was hurt too. In, 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 a, in a little brief period of time, but still, Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. Cause we've seen it before where some players, it'll be like, man, this player is starting to fall off a little bit, but sometimes they're just on the wrong team. Sometimes all people need is a fresh start, and they just feel rejuvenated. Um, Jets wide receiver Elijah Moore. And I think he could be a breakout candidate because – Maybe Joe Flacco starts. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just playing. Um, but another guy that they had on here that a lot of us are pretty familiar with, uh, Ravens wide receiver Rashad Bateman. They have him as a uh, breakout candidate for the 2022 season. And I think if you ask really any Ravens fan, like really think about it. If you ask any Ravens fan, Who's a breakout candidate for the Baltimore Ravens this year? I feel like 99% of them would also say Rashad Bateman. Why? Uh, because of opportunity. Opportunity is probably the biggest thing right here. Uh, Hollywood Brown got traded to the Cardinals. So now Rashad Bateman, he elevates to sort of that number one receiver role. He, still, he, of course, has to take it and make it happen and earn it. But that's what the expectation is, that he becomes Lamar Jackson's number one receiver. And I know a lot of people say, oh, no, no, Lamar Jackson's number one receiver is the tight end Mark Andrews. But we're talking about the receiver position. The Ravens, uh, they showed last year how much they loved Rashad Bateman and how much they really valued Rashad Bateman. Now, there were times throughout the season when that the, the way that they showed how much they valued him, it got a little murky because I remember in his very first game, very first game, because he had missed the first five, six games with injury. He came back in his very first game. And like I told y'all recently before, I, I didn't think that he was going to play a bunch of snaps. I thought maybe like, oh, 50, 60 percent. But no, he was out there a lot. Very first game, him and Lamar Jackson had chemistry. They had him out there like the whole game. But then <clears throat> a couple games later, I remember the Dolphins game. And it was so confusing. It was frustrating. Uh, Rashad Bateman and Lamar Jackson, they were on the sideline frustrated. Um, but in that Dolphins game, it's like, man. Hollywood struggling. Sammy Watkins struggling. Why we? Where's Rashad Bateman at? And he was on the sideline. He was healthy. Nothing wrong. Standing up, walking around. We saw that number twelve pacing, cause we sat where we sat at at that game. It was on the Ravens sideline, not on the sideline, but on their side of the field. And we kept seeing Rashad Bateman going back, forth, back, forth. I'm like, why is he not on the field? Especially when you're playing with an injured Sammy Watkins. So hopefully Ravens this year, they will right a lot of their wrongs. Because that's, yeah, that's, that's stuff like that is unacceptable. And then in that same game, guess what happened when they start throwing Rashad Bateman the ball? When they start having him on the field, and Lamar's throwing him the ball. Oh, oh, he was moving that thing. Oh, oh, he was making plays happen. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I remember. So with Rashad Bateman, but now with, with there being no Hollywood, with there being no Sammy Watkins, that really, and with them having not drafted a wide receiver, that really uh, elevates him. It puts him in a real good position to be a breakout candidate. And I don't think any Ravens fans would be like, oh, no, Rashad Bateman, he, he wouldn't be breaking it. No, I, everybody would agree. Everybody would expect it. Um, and last year, I think Rashad Bateman had about a little over 500 yards. 
Um, and but this the thing with Rashad Bateman that you got to remember, he only played in I think twelve games. Uh, he had five hundred yards, but a lot of those games were not played with Lamar Jackson. Some were played with Tyler Huntley. Uh, there was a little bit of Josh Johnson in there, um, but a lot of it was not with Lamar Jackson. So that's something to think about, too. And that's something to consider when you talk about Rashad Bateman uh, being a breakout candidate and why it just makes so much sense. Ravens upgraded their offensive line. That would lead to more and better and more quality protection for one Lamar Jackson to where it could give him more uh, quality and better time uh, to make his throws. A lot of times last year, Lamar Jackson had to make throws on the run. I uh, had to make throws while some of the, the pocket was collapsing. Just had to make a lot of Superman stuff happen. But now uh, we hope that the Superman stuff ends up being far and few. Uh, we hope that that offensive line can do its thing. Um, and what that offensive line does, it helps out Mark Andrews. And if it helps Mark Andrews, you know there's going to be a lot of attention on him. It could help Rashad Bateman too. So Mark Andrews, the attention that he draws, it could end up freeing up Rashad Bateman a bit. But then, what if teams are taking out Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman? What if they double in both of them? Who's going to be that guy to step up? Well, that's a, that's a whole other conversation. But I, I can understand why Rashad Bateman uh, is looking like he is going to break out this year. Because if I had to pick somebody to break out this year from the Ravens, especially on offense... It would be him all day. All day. Um, so BR Gridiron, this is this is one of the better posts that y'all had recently. Where well, the Ravens were involved at least. Cause cause I remember last week we went over one of the posts where they were talking about trading Marcus Peters to the Colts. Was, oof, yuck. Gross. That's so, so disgusting. So disgusting. But in that same post, they talked about trading Chuck Clark to the Cowboys, trading Nick Boyle to the Giants in exchange for Kenny Galladay. Um, and, oh, and the Ravens trading for a, a Scotty Miller. So anyway, this this was a, a much better post from y'all, which I appreciate it. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for everything that y'all do. We out.